Is getting a tattoo acceptable as a Christian? This question is more common than you might think, and many of us have encountered it. The pressures of society, judgments from others, and uncertainty about what the Bible truly teaches can be overwhelming. But today, I'm here to help you navigate this issue and find clarity amidst the confusion. In this video, we'll delve into the biblical perspective on tattoos, examine the context of the scriptures, and reflect on what this means for your faith. By the end, I hope you'll feel more confident in your decision, no matter which path you choose. If you're ready to discover the truth and find peace with this question, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss future videos. And if you're already subscribed, please leave a like and share your thoughts on tattoos in the comments. A common answer you may have already heard, or possibly the first answer you'd get on Google, when asking what the Bible says about tattoos is a reference to Leviticus 19.28 from the Old Testament. You shall not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves, I am the Lord. This verse is the only place in the Bible that directly addresses tattoos, so let's start here. Funny enough, this is the same scripture I web-searched on my iPod Touch during my junior year of high school when someone asked me what I thought about tattoos. Seeing that verse pop up immediately, I responded, well, looks like we shouldn't get them. But wait, the verse before this one states, do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. I'm not sure about you, but I've been getting a 0.5 fade and trimming my non-existent beard for a few years now. So, am I doing this all wrong? We need more context, and it's always helpful to look at Jesus and the New Testament letters when asking these questions. In his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul says that Jesus is the culmination of the Old Testament law, Romans 10.4, and is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. So it seems like Jesus abolished the law here, so let's get inked. But wait, Jesus himself says in Matthew 5.17, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So not so fast, it's still confusing. Most Christians throughout history take some Old Testament laws as guidelines for all times, while others are thought to be specific to the times of ancient Israel. For example, we assume the Ten Commandments carry over and are for all God followers for all time. Jesus affirms these Ten Commandments in Mark 10.19 and in several other teachings. Still, we tend not to worry about wearing blended fabrics like the cotton poly blend t-shirt I'm currently wearing, even though they are outlawed in Leviticus 19.19 and Deuteronomy 22.11. When deciding which Old Testament laws to pay attention to, we have to dig deeper and get into the ancient context and see God's intent with the laws he established. Yes, I know it's complicated, and saying some Old Testament laws apply today and some don't apply leaves the door open for abuse, and many love to run through that door, but God clearly wants us to wrestle with him and his word. That's how a relationship is formed. The word Israel, the name of God's people in the Old Testament, is literally translated as wrestles with God. So when interpreting the Old Testament, consistency and context matter. First, if the specifics or substance of a law is repeated consistently in every age, throughout the thousands of years that scripture covers and or is affirmed by Jesus himself, it's a good bet that it was meant to apply to all time. In the case of tattoos, that's not what we see. Second, we have to look at the context. Some of the practices outlawed in the Old Testament law had a very specific reason for being outlawed, a reason that does not really exist today, so they don't necessarily apply in a literal sense to our modern context, even if the truth that they are based on is still truth and therefore supreme. But to know if that's the case, we must examine the history. The Law of Inking, 
We must put ourselves in that period to gain insight into those reasons, because while the reason behind the forbiddance of tattoos in this passage is not explicitly stated, I'm not sure it was because God hated seeing people get a tiny heart inked on their ankles or barbed wire around their biceps. Let's take a quick look at the state of the world at the time this law would have been commanded. Historically, tattoos were done for many reasons that weren't necessarily recreational. Just ask Utzi, Europe's oldest known natural human mummy, who lived between 3350 and 3105 BC and had 61 tattoos. Sadly for Utzi though, his tats were likely not for showing off at a coffee shop or the beach. Marks for crimes, prostitution or pain relief were the most common reasons until the after Jesus time. Furthermore, many would cut their skin and make tattoos honoring false gods or other superstitions. The reference tattoos were likely ceremonial, expressing the false gods that the tattoo bearer was worshipping. So, God had a specific reason not to be too keen on them. So are tattoos a sin? First of all, it's essential to recognize that the topic of tattoos is complex. It reveals a division of opinions among Christians. On one hand, there are those who firmly believe tattoos are sinful, often citing Leviticus and emphasizing the need to stay pure and set apart from the world. They see the body as the temple of the Holy Spirit and believe we should preserve it as best we can. On the other hand, some Christians argue that tattoos can be a form of personal expression and even a testament to their faith. For them, a tattoo can tell a story of challenges overcome, faith deepened, or memories of loved ones. They see it not as an offense to God, but as a celebration of life and what He has done. Think about this. In our daily lives, we encounter people expressing their individuality in many ways. Imagine a friend who has a tattoo that symbolizes a profound faith experience, something that changed their life. When you look at that tattoo, it's not just ink, it's a living testament to God's love and grace. As we discuss these differing views, we must seek God's truth with open hearts. Romans 14.1 reminds us, accept the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. We need to avoid judging others based on our own convictions and instead foster understanding and love. How do you feel about these perspectives? Do they reflect your own struggles? Ultimately, we all seek approval and understanding in our walk with God. It's natural to want to please Him, but the key is that this desire comes from a sincere heart. Do you have any tattoos? Do they hold special meaning for you? Leave a comment and let us know. As we explore this topic, let's turn our attention to Scripture, where we find guidance. To understand what God truly intended, His command was a call to holiness, to be separate from neighboring nations that engaged in practices offensive to God. But if God cares most about what's in our hearts, is a tattoo intended to glorify Him really an offense? So, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and comment. It helps our message reach more people. And always remember, God calls us to a life of holiness, which goes beyond outward rules and into the heart of our relationship with Him.